Hi, I'm Patrick the Free Will Baptist, and today we're going to confront, confront some shiners at Walmart. Sorry for the bad quality, but I'm using a lighter camera. Now, a lot of people say, oh, but the shiners, they're Christians. Well, let's go up here and see what they say about that. The uh, local shiners started their usual ritual buying for money in my town. Now, everybody gets mad because they'll say, well, now they help sick children and, and burn children and dying children and all that. Is that the truth? Do they really? Are the uh, Shriners known for going into uh, hospitals and preaching the gospel to children that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way and that without Him, they'll wind up in hell no matter how much good that they're doing for them right now for their flesh? Answer me that. Doesn't matter what kind of good works you do. But anyway, let me get back to the whole point of this. Um, it's against the law for a person that's poor to beg on the side of the road. Um, typically, uh, shiners will set up in the middle of intersections bumming for money. But yeah, nobody makes them stop. Now that's kind of unfair to all the homeless people that are trying to support their families and stuff that, that, that can't get jobs. But yet you think you're doing the greater good? <clears throat> so when I approach these men, you'll notice I asked them, What do you guys know about the Lord Jesus Christ? And the oldest man to my left, he said, A whole lot. What do you guys know about the Lord Jesus Christ? Huh? What do you guys know about the Lord Jesus Christ? We know a whole lot about it. What do you know? Okay, in that statement, did anybody here, any of these three men, say that that was their Lord and Savior? What do you guys know about the Lord Jesus Christ? Huh? What do you guys know about the Lord Jesus Christ? We know a whole lot about it. What do you know? Mm -mm. No, that's not what they said when I asked them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And in fact, I mean, that's not what they were there for anyway. They were there to collect money for their hospitals. I know that, that Shriners actually swear that Allah is their God. Huh? I know that you all actually proclaim Allah to be your God. Oh, well, yeah, you do. Look at your guys' Muslim crescent moon on your hat and stuff. Well, hey. Is that a, your God on your shirt? Absolutely not. I said well, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well. All while he was saying that, he had on his finger there uh, a ring with a five-point star on it. Hmm. Really? But, uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. I, I should have shirts. I should wear shirts that profess the Lord Jesus Christ. No joke. I mean... I'm going to show you that the shirt that I had on that made that uh, Shriner say, Oh, is that your God? Okay. It's just a goofy, retarded, shirt, uh, nerd shirt, you know. I mean, come on. Does that look like that's what I worship? I came up to him, the first thing I was talking about was Lord Jesus Christ. But anyway, yeah, I agree, you know, maybe I shouldn't wear retarded shirts, but... Well, just because we wear something on a hat... See, I've got your all's morals and dogma book. I was oh, just trying what? to come over here. You all, your all's morals and dogma book by Albert Pike. I'm sure when I was talking to these guys, I had no idea I owned one of these in my possession because when I started talking about this here book, which is called Right There, Morals and Dogma by Fat Albert Pike. Albert Pike was, uh, was known for being the, uh, basically being the Pope of Masonry. This is uh, one of the old it's kind of like a Masonic Bible of sorts. It has all kinds of uh, their uh, mystic, esoteric faith trash contained inside of it. Albert Pike tells you about how Lucifer is their light bearer and doubt it not. And that Masonry is a faith and a religion. It's all been admitted in this book here. There's plenty of people that expose these things on YouTube and I couldn't help it. I went on eBay and got one myself. And I uh, told that old man about Morals and Dogma book, and you know, he hit me with a little bit of it. He tried to act, act stupid about the whole matter. When I reminded him that the Masonic libraries, they're open to the public, but what he, he really didn't realize was, I got one of these books. So all he was doing was proving to me what kind of sworn liar that shiners are. Because that's all they're good for 
is to lie to you. It's beyond me why anybody won't want to preach to them in a pulpit, much less a first degree or a third degree. Yeah, no, 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 don't lie. Come on now. Because your all's library is even open for the public. What's that? So I know that you all have one. So, you know, come on now. Hey, buddy, if you have a problem, get some help with birds and crippled children. I, but now, is that what I said to you? And here you see this clown's happy to point out. What have you got against the sick and dying children? Look what you're doing. You're, you're saying just because we worship Satan that we're, we're doing something wrong by helping sick children. Where was it I walked up to him and said anything bad about helping sick children? Get real. Come on now. They say that they really are doing good by... Run now, look, I'm not putting down helping people. But I want you to understand something. When you're doing a good work, you're supposed to glorify God not look for your good work to save you from hell. Um, the biggest problem really with masonry is it fools its followers into believing that based upon their good merits that they can be they can gain entrance into something called the Grand Lodge above or something or another. Another thing about the Shriners Hospital it's not as good as you'd think it is. They say they're leaders in research. That's right. Leaders in research. What that means is, is that they need money to uh, research other treatments and stuff. And so they'll take treatments that haven't been approved and they'll use them on children. So what happens when the research isn't good research and they turn around and treat a child with uh, really bad medicine, you know, because it wasn't good research. The problem here with research hospitals is is it's a uh, test and trial center for your children. While they might get treatment there, they might also be harmed there just as well because it is a leader in, what's that word right there? Research. They don't actually have all the knowledge. They're trying to get it all. And they're like, give us some money when we bum in the street and then send us your sick and dying children so we can research on them like little guinea pigs. And any hospital that does research, that's exactly what it is. The patient is a guinea pig. And I know people have said, but we have to learn all this. The fact of the matter is, is that your child will be used for research if you go and patron a Shriner Hospital. They will use new, new methods on your child and use your child to watch and see what kind of side effects they get from the treatments and whether or not it works or wastes their time or kills your child. So, if you want to uh, go to one of the leaders in research, go to the Shriners Hospital. They'll be happy to uh, use your child for research. No, but that's what we're, we're working for. But that don't get you to heaven. No, right. we, we didn't say it did. Yeah, but see, That's when between me and see, God, but see, me and God, at a Shriners it's one on Friday, one, brother. So you guys just hide behind the children that you help instead instead of being honest about the doctrine that you preach and teach. You don't even know what our doctrine is. Well, now see, now that's where you actually have no idea exactly what I know. What's true? You don't know what I know. No, I didn't say I did, but I know what your philosophy is, see. And you all don't believe that Jesus Christ is the only way. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, the you know. Given some of the well, people I, I know that I came out of that, right that they'll tell you that you're, you're not judging going. people. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's called righteous judgment. Oh. I, I'm not judging you based on your sin lifestyle. I'm judging you based on the philosophy I understand that you believe in. It's the same reason why. Well, you don't know what we believe. <laughs> Here you just actually caught that Shriner and learned of the fact that well, I know they don't preach and teach the gospel, and they're also quite secretive about what they believe too. He was bit, if you watch him carefully, he said to you, Well, you don't know what I believe. Well, yeah, because it's a Shriner's business to have a secret, occult, esoteric religion of their own. And it's only a privy to their own brethren of the same degree of lies. See, a Christian would never say that to another person. If, like when the Je Jehovah's Witness came to my door, I didn't laugh at him and say, Well, you don't know what I believe. With, with complete arrogance like that would make me so much better than him. Why, shucks, no, son. I tried to share share with him what I know. Son, you will not get no Shriner to share what they know with you. You'll get him to share a pile of lies and deceit with you, just like what you're watching on the, on the short video I got here. 
But basically what you see here is he's admitted that they're, in a, they're a cult. He said, we're secret and you don't know what we believe. And that's right, buddy. That's what I'm judging. I said that you're an unsaved child of Satan simply because you do not believe the gospel. That's it. And then you just confirmed it by telling me, well, you don't know what I believe. Well, look. If you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, I should, shouldn't I now? But that's not what your cult teaches and does. It, it, it's into iniquity and wickedness. Well, what I actually was saying to him is what the Lord Jesus Christ said in John 7, chap John chapter 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Now, the way that you judge righteous judgment is with, with the Word of God. And, and it's not by judging what a person does in their sin life, where they drink beer or watch porn or all that other ungodly trash. But it's, uh, what do you actually believe in your heart? What do you believe about the Lord Jesus Christ and about the gospel? Do you, in Second uh, John, there's only one chapter, verse number 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any, if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. Well, let me ask you a question. How come it is that to go in one of your temples that a person would have to say that they're in darkness looking for light? Well, they don't to go into the shrine temple. They do to go into the Blue Lodge. To go into the Blue Lodge, you have to say that you're in darkness and search a lot. Yes, See, sir. what I don't understand is how people can pray with other people of, of different faiths. Now, you'll also notice here that I got this man to admit that people that entered the Blue Lodge, which is the first three degrees of masonry, which you must have gotten into the Blue Lodge in order to have gotten into the uh, shrine. Anyway, uh that that person has to admit that they're in darkness and search a lot. Now what did the Lord Jesus Christ say about that? Do the, like I was saying earlier, does Freemasonry actually teach that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? Is that what they're out there professing and proclaiming on the streets when they're out there taking money? Or any other time, like maybe when they're riding their little clown mobiles or whatever other show and gyrate and mockery they put on in public? Have you ever, ever seen a big, big Shriner show where it was all about the Lord Jesus Christ? No, and you never will either. So let's turn to 1 John 1, 5 through 8. Then this is the message which we have heard of Him and declare unto you that God is light, and in Him is dark, no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not know the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one one with another. So you understand that what John was saying here is that uh, the only way that you're in light is that if you have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. There's no other way to be in the light. So when a person goes into the uh, Blue Lodge as an apprentice, first degree mason, and, and says to them that they're in darkness and search a lot, yeah, they're, they're not saved by the blood, and they've admitted it. To go into the Blue Lodge, you have to say that you're in darkness and search a lot. Yes, See, sir. what I don't understand is how people can pray with other people of, of different faiths. They turn around any other time and say otherwise, the Word of God says they're a liar. Because uh, they, don't go, they don't go to the Bible, to God's Holy Word, to get their lot. They believe that they're illuminated because that they go to a Freemasonic temple. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 verse 13 through 15 For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So, um, the devil's been transformed into an angel a lot, and the Bible says 
don't be shocked. Even his ministers are even going to have some kind of an appearance of righteousness. To go into the Blue Lodge, you have to say that you're in darkness and search a lot. Yes, See, what and the Shriner says to me, but we helped us sick children. Hey, buddy, if you have a problem, get some help with burns and crippled children. I Do you now? So turn with me, if you will, to 1 Timothy 1.3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went to into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith so do. So what other doctrines is it that masonry holds that the Bible doesn't teach? Maho Bone or Jahabiloon or whatever his foolish name was. Or how about when, um, what about when a candidate gets up to the 17th degree in the Scottish Rite and they're taught that their God is uh, Abaddon? Hmm? If you're reading Revelations 9-11, you'll see exactly who that is. People think just because, man, he's doing all kinds of good stuff, and he's crying real good, and it sounds like he's, he's really walking with the Lord, apparently saved. Really? What does he believe? People need to learn discernment. Let's go to Matthew 7 and verse number 20. Now, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ said. He said, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So are the fruits of Freemasonry, do they get out there and preach in their lodges and out on the streets and everything with all their symbols on them that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, that there's no other way? Can we prove, can we find out from documentation of other Masons that that's what the cult believes in? Really? Okay, so... Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have done, have cast in thy name cast out many devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Ain't I took up all kinds of money for the sick children in the hospitals? Can't that cover all this other stuff I want to believe? And then the Lord Jesus will profess to them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth this, these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man which buildeth his house upon a rock. And you can go on to read about the parable between the wise man and the foolish man. And somebody that claims to be a Christian and wants to go into masonry to make themselves better, look, Hebrews 10.26 warns against sin and against the truth. And once you've uh, actually received the truth, which is your salvation, and you go against that, there is no forgiveness for that. that. That's not the same thing as committing adultery with another man's wife. People need to learn more discernment for uh, sins versus uh, what their actual faith is in. Because there's a lot of people that profess, I do all these good works, and I'm, I'm going to get into heaven. You know, come on now. Hey, buddy, if you have a problem, get some help with burns and crippled children. I, but now, is that what I said to you? Does Freemasonry teach that there's only one way to heaven, through the blood and faith of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or does Masonry teach something else? Like, maybe there's other names in Jesus. <clears throat> I'm waiting for your answer. I'm sure that a lot of Masons and stuff, they're going to have all kinds of hateful things to say about it, you know. But the fact of it is, this is the, this is the uh, hard fact of the truth, believe it or not. But uh, Masonry does not teach that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. No, no sir. Not a bit. Just a couple of days later, while I was going down another street, uh, there was actually a woman out there begging for money for the Shriners. I've never actually seen that, so I had to ask her. Ma'am, are you really collecting money for the shrine? I can't hear you. Are you really collecting money for the shrine? Yes. Are you an Eastern Star? No. How do y'all collect money for, for the shrine? I just thought they let men do that. My husband's over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have a good day.
Hey, how come it is you all don't tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ? They do. They do not. They do so. When? In their meetings. That's a lie. Okay, so the lady says to me that, oh, well, they, they talk about Jesus in their, in their meetings. Really? <laughs> so they just, that's the only time they talk about Jesus, just in their meetings. Well, okay. But there's another problem with what she said there. The woman also admitted that she wasn't a Shriner. Now, how is it that she knows what the Shriners actually believe if she's not a Shriner? Because the Shriners say to me, now you couldn't know what the Shrine teaches unless you go, unless you're in it. Hmm. So, either this woman's husband's broken an oath and told, told his wife about the things that go on in the Shrine, or... That woman was lying. Yeah, I really think she was lying. Now, she might have been lied to by her husband. He might have tried to tell her that, oh, it's a Jesus organization, but, oh, get real. With the Muslim symbol and everything on there, and the Egyptian symbol, and the satanic five-point star and all, and being a former Satanist, I know about the goat, goat head of Mindy star and all, and, you know... The Christian wouldn't want it, I promise. It's a curse. Here, here's the third thing. She said they just talk about Jesus in their meetings. They, they don't publicly, like I, like I was showing here, they don't publicly go out and try and, and preach the gospel to other people if they even knew what it was. There are, there are organizations about doing good works, not about preaching the gospel. That doesn't make it a good works organization, then, if they're not going to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to understand something. I'm not sitting here talking about how mean people are just because they want to help children. If they really wanted to help sick children, they'd be giving them the gospel so that when they grow up, they can be born again and that they can go into the kingdom of God like good children instead of going on to hell. But the truth of the matter is, that's not what the Shriners organization does. ShrinersHospitalForChildren.org And here at their page when you click on care to see what kind of care that they'll give you, it says care beyond cost. We are committed to providing the best care for children in our specialty areas. Now these are my words. Of research. Orthopedics, burn care, spinal cord injury, and cleft lip and palate, regardless of a family's ability to pay. Now that's a really good thing that, you know, that there, there's hospitals that just does not care about a family's financial status, that they will provide care for children with injuries and birth defects. Or anything else at, at that, even for other people, but especially for the children. I, it's no joke. It's heart-wrenching to watch a child suffer. Being a parent that's our, that's lost a child before, it's something I wouldn't wish on wish on my worst enemy is is the death of a child, or injury, or malformity. But the whole point of what I was trying to say here is, I'm not talking about them helping people in pain. I'm saying they won't give them the gospel so that they can be saved and so when they when this life here in the flesh is over with that they might be saved from hell they don't shriners aren't known for teaching them how to be born again they're just known for these hospitals and these works and that won't cover a multitude of false doctrine i was unable to find anything on their website about the lord jesus christ not one single thing not a mention of his name so you're going to have a hard time trying to tell me how that the hospitals also win children to the Lord too. Because I'm going to have to say, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Because the website doesn't say that that's the care that you provide. It's only about providing care for people that can't pay and doing research while they're doing the care. That is all the website teaches about. Oh, and of course, if you want to become a Shriner. But not if you don't... It, but they don't have any links about becoming a born-again Christian. But the fact of the matter is, um, 
the lower degree Masons, they may not have a slightest clue what's going on. Lots of them are innocent, but I don't understand how innocent you can really be when you claim you're in darkness. I mean, what I'm telling you here, guys, is there's not a person that goes into the lodge that says that they're in darkness in search of light that's a saved person in the body of Jesus Christ. In order to be in the body of Jesus Christ, the person would have to come out of that. <laughs> A person filled with the light of Jesus Christ is not going to go and tell somebody else that they don't have it. Because if you do, and you, I mean, if you claim such, then you make Jesus Christ a liar. So who's a liar? You or the Lord? It's very important, my friends, that you understand and learn proper discernment for who the brethren is and exactly what organizations stand for. Anything that is secretive, that there's levels to, that you'll you'll have to get to a certain level to attain to understand what, you know, what all the upper ones do. Listen, it's like this. The ones that are on up in the in the fifteenth to the thirtieth degree, they know a lot of things that the uh, lower sheep that are meant to be sheared in their ignorance have no clue of what's going on. So consider this. The people that are higher up, especially considered the Shriners, or on the uh, the other end of it, uh, the Rosicrucians, um, you'll have to greatly consider this. They lie deliberately to the members of the lower degree and prey on their in and prey on their ignorance. Now, what kind of Christian does that? That's not a part of being a born again believer blood bought by the Lamb of God. I urge you, friends and brethren, be very, very careful. There are many people that seem good and seem righteous and seem godly. They have a form of godliness that you actually will deny the Lord Jesus looking for other names like Javulon or Mahabon or what other blasphemous trash. And listen, guys, they won't say that to you because they believe this stuff's sacred that they got to repeat it in, in groups of, of three people, you know, like holding arms or something or other. I don't know. I mean, it's just a bunch of crazy ritualistic trash that that's a vein of no profit, especially not somebody that actually wants to follow the Lord Jesus. Man, look at this guy sitting here, bumming money, hiding behind sick children in the middle of the road. And yeah, people can't actually if they're poor and hungry they can't bum bum on the side of the road but yet you got shriners and masons that can bum wicked cult but at the end of this uh masons are well known for swearing oaths there's two really good scriptures that tell us not to do this now of course a dispensationalist they're going to say now now jesus wasn't talking to you and the book of james wasn't written to you either But, you pray and ask God, so did the Lord Jesus Christ ever talk to you? Or was he just talking to another group of people? So let's read in Matthew 5, 33. Again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea and yea and nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Hmm. So the Lord Jesus Christ was saying right there plainly. Somebody's trying to make you promise, affirm, swear, pledge. All that's come, that, all that's from evil. So turn with me, if you will, to cha James chapter number 5, verse number 12. Above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. So that should be enough scripture there to show you that. Freemasonry doesn't line up with the Bible at all. Um, I'm going to make few, all kinds of future videos showing that Masonry is not compatible with being a born-again Christian. It's only compatible with being a tear. 
There's lots of people that profess Jesus that aren't saved. There's tons and tons of churches full of them. And it's not just Masons that do this either. But Masons have a lot of people confused by their good works that somehow they're following the Lord. But, well, they don't always profess the name Lord Jesus Christ. They're on a search for another name. Anyway, again, thank you for your time. Please watch the rest of my videos. i got plenty more on masonry and other salvation studies. There is only one way to heaven, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll need to meet him in the King James Bible. Make sure you find yourself a 1769 Pure Cambridge edition. Don't get you one of those modern perversions that uh, help teach false doctrines. Repent it if you're a mason. All you got to do is get out of Mason or just, just renounce that trash. Repent and turn to the Lord. You cannot be saved if you believe what Masonry teaches. You can't hold other doctrines contrary to the doctrine of Christ. Repentance is necessary for people to be saved. If you, must, you must repent of your wicked unbelief. So anyway, thank you again for your time. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ and have a good day.